I'd like to welcome you all here today to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the saving of this special piece of bushland. As we all know, Kelly's Bush was saved for the nation by the courage and determination of a group of fearless women and by the principled and community-minded men who supported them. We're very honored to have Judy Mundy here with us today. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Walla Medical people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to elders, past, present, and emerging. And it all started back in uh, 18, what is it, 92, when Thomas H. Kelly uh, purchased this land and then set up a smelter on the site. And that smelter operated until the uh, middle of uh, last century. And he then sold it on, or there was an option by A.V. Jennings to bulldoze the site and to put 147 uh, flats on the site in three large tower blocks. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are on the land of the Wallamadagal and pay tribute to their elders. I'd also like to acknowledge Judy Mundy uh, and the relatives and friends of those original battlers and of course all the friends of Kelly's Bush. On the 17th of June 1971, a small unskilled trade union made a decision that was to change the face of environmental activism around the world and of course also save the Sydney that we now know today. And the momentous decision was the Kelly's Bush Green Ban, the first environmental trade union ban in Australia and indeed the world. These things are now quite common, but we have to keep remembering that in, at the time that the Kelly's Bush ban was put on, it really was the first in the world. Um, this ban was a uh, wonderful cooperation between two very disparate groups, the famous battlers of Kelly's Bush, the middle class matrons of Hunter's Hill, as they're continually called. Um, I actually knew two of them quite well because they were CSIRO women, um, Kathleen Haney and Betty James. And uh, the collaboration was between them and the Communist Party led builders labourers. Um, but our lovely Kelly's Bush was being threatened by a large housing development and uh, the uh, battlers who had formed some years earlier called on the help of the builders labourers. At the time led by Jack Mundy uh, and Bob Pringle and Joe Owens. And the first Green Ban, a very important event, ha began in very unspectacular fashion. The New South Wales Builders Labourers Executive Minutes for the 4th of June 1971 record a very prosaic resolution. Moved Brother Owens, seconded Brother T. Hogan, that R. Pringle investigate a report next Tuesday on Kelly Bush. They even called it the wrong name. Anyway, uh, history was made, Bob Pringle and someone from the FEDFA, another union, uh, came out here, inspected the place and went back and re recommended to the union that a ban be placed. The union then asked the uh, battlers to convene a meeting of residents just to check that it had huge community support and 600 residents turned up at that meeting. And so they formally requested a ban and the union, on the 17th of June, a meeting of rank and file members, put a ban on the bush. And what followed, and I'm talking here now really about what happened with the union, because it's the half of the great celebration we're having today. But over the next four years, the union put bans on inappropriate development in Sydney that held up $50 billion in 1970s terms of development activity. Where I was living, it saved Glebe from two huge uh, distributors, saved The Rocks, saved Woolloomooloo, saved Victoria Street, saved Centennial Park, which was going to be a giant sporting complex, and saved beautiful buildings in the city, and also buildings in Bathurst, Newcastle, and Wollongong. It was a really important development in the in the environmental push in Australia. And the union's green bands quickly became known around the world, as has been uh, referred to, 
Uh, Petra Kelly, the leader of the Greens in uh, Germany, came here and saw them and went back and and renamed the Greens Party in, in Germany. Uh, Spike Milligan became a huge fan. Uh, Jack Mundy uh, toured uh, the world talking about what was happening and he, addre he addressed the first United Nations conference on the built environment in 1976. So really important international environmentalism was affected by this Kelly's Bush Green Band. At home, the, our noble laureate Patrick White wrote, it is rare that a union has such an advanced social conscience. Now, I just want to quickly read out something that Trudy Collier wrote in the early 1990s. She was one of the battlers. She wrote, the Green Band on Kelly's Bush was the first successful urban environmental campaign and it inspired others to do something about where they were living. It really raised awareness about the need to balance development and preservation. Today, everyone knows how to put a campaign like this together, but it was all new then. Neville Rand promised us in 1976, when he became Premier, that the land would be bought as a public reserve. After a long fight, Kelly's Bush was finally bought in 1983. Considering we were accused of being communists, we were all made honorary citizens of Hunters Hill a few years ago. And she was very proud of that, the fact that these communist battlers had become honorary citizens. Now, today with a comprehensive web of environment and heritage legislation, surely such physical action as the green bands is not necessary. But seriously, the history of uh, the uh, demolition of the uh, old bridge at Windsor, the removal of Willow Grove in Parramatta, the threats to the Bondi Pavilion, we realise that the fight against inappropriate development is still going on. So what we're celebrating today is 50 years on what a really significant win for the brave local bunch of activists from Kelly's Bush. But it, it was a wonderful local victory but it was a giant landmark in the global fight for the environment. You should all be very proud of yourselves. And this morning when I was walking up, I was thinking about the steps and how those steps over the 50 years have held our stories and they've held our dreams and they've held our stresses and they've held our aspirations. The legacy of today is the simple reminder of what happens when we care and the reminder for us just simply to be better citizens. And so I thank you, all of you, for that. Thank you so much. It's, it's wonderful to use art to um, reflect a point in time around an interpretation of, um, of our environment. Congratulations. And finally, our first prize winner, Riley um, Caceres, in appreciation with your depiction of aspects of Kelly's Bush. A skillful rendering and charming design of the bush flowers suggests a celebration. Thank you. Guys. I'd like to uh, formally welcome Dr. Joan Capole, uh, one of the Kelly's Bush battlers that is responsible for what we are here for today. Dr. Kroll um, is uh, now going to help us uh, unveil the table, which is a memorial table in a plaque. Would you like to join us? Yay. The 1970s battle by 13 women to save Kelly's Bush from development actually changed the world for the better. Joan Kroll, seen here, is the last of those Kelly's Bush battlers. Jack Mundy, as Secretary of the New South Wales Builders Labourers Federation, was their great enabler. His widow, Judy Mundy, is beside Joan. <laughs> 